right okay we're gonna start today's reading of fiebre tropical chapter 2 follow along page 19 <clears throat> it is say la tata was obsessed with don francisco sábados gigantes was jesus before jesus was jesus if ever for moving to Miami, homegirl watching religiously every Saturday, mumbling amorcitos from her rocking chair to the television. Back in Colombia, Tata had visions where she stepped onto Don Francisco, set in a glorious dress, spun the magic wheel and won a car, or a kitchen set, or a vacation for two. She would hold my hand and say, Ay, Mimi, te imagina, you and I in a Disney world. Once in Miami, she called the 1-800 number several times, leaving detailed messages. Si niña, Alba, that is A-L-B-A, si Alba. Can you tell him to call me back? It's important. In Miami, the galant dream was close. So close was Tata to having the Chilean-born puppy read her name tag, call him from the audience, holding on his hand for her. Alba is la ganadora, he would say. Above everything, she wanted to be a winner. Of what? Of the moment of recognition of that spotlight, of Don Francisco landing a faint kiss on her cheek. Tata would sit in the first row with the rest of the Cuban señoras, but she would be his favorite, the one with the special juju. She would have hung the photograph of Don Francisco with his arm around her, next to her blessed woman of the year certificate from church. If the never-aging puppy called, she would have worn the dark green dress that only the gold earrings that she still owned. She walked down the steps like she once did at Club Union in Cartagena, sending kisses this way, kisses that way, but this time she would mean it. Pero niña, the Mr. Tumbalocas called. Y ahí estamos, on the couch, watching some señora hold Don Francisco's hand and win Tata's kitchen set. Mírala, Tata said, she doesn't even know how to spin the wheel. Mommy didn't understand how Tata praised Jesucristo all day, then watched that low-class crap where fake heaven blondes in huge cleavages danced around El Chacal and gifted people slimy kisses, kitchen knives, and trips to Kisimi. And wasn't Tata supposed to be working on the arroz con coco? Didn't Tata understand that the baptism was happening soon and Mommy's hair needed two days of work? And I mean, nobody was helping her. And why hasn't anybody checked their to-do list? Take it in. There are three baptism to-do lists. Tata used hers as a coaster. The other two were posted on the fridge, each of our names double underlined, Lucia and Francisca. Not even Lucia finished her endless list, which included stuff like baptism playlist, baby crosses from the dollar store, and cleaning Sebastian's face con el Lysol, all with a huge ojo scribbled on each side, little eyelashes, little eyes with eyelashes filling both of the O's. We let mommy rant. I sat on the couch behind Tata, popping black heads from her back. She paid me 25 cents a pop. Mommy, money that never materialized, but I nonetheless sat every time she asked because I love squishing her back fat. I was a special chosen kid who got to squish my Tata's skin and liberate her from the horrors of black heads and pus. If she was tipsy enough, she let me draw on her back with a black pen. And I always did. Once, back in Colombia, as she undressed for a medical checkup, the doctor gasped in horror at the drawings of headless zombie women eating their babies that I had meticulously traced on Tata's back. Nurses were instructed to clean her immediately before the traumatized doctor could continue checking Tata's heart. Mommy was still on the phone negotiating something on other. La Tata moved around, pulling at her dress, getting her round and white costeña as comfortable on the sofa. Pájaros tirándoles a las escopetas, Tata finally said. Habráse visto tanta huevonada. Those people, she continued to mommy, are Jesus's hijos too, okay? And the arroz con coco will get done whenever the arroz con coco gets done. A una ni la dejan, she wouldn't drop it. I can't even watch Don Francisco in peace, no joda. Of course, mommy wouldn't leave it alone. Pero mamá... Mommy continued, this is blasphemy. Do you think this is proper kiss Christian behavior? Don't you remember what the pastora said last week about those who deviate from the Savior's path? And where in the Biblia is that passage? Show it to me, porque Jesus did not die on the cross, so half naked women could dance around that man. Ese show es tan vulgar. 
What mommy really meant was that she was anxious, she was tired, and here we were watching girls in glittery short dresses hold balloons and yell on TV. Tata responded the best way she knew how. A sigh so loud it sent waves around all of South Florida. A shutting of the eyes so intense and precise. The homegirl rearranged her eyes against the couch that it creaked and shrieked, let the couch embody all her emotion. Then she sighed again, louder. Señoras y señores, you do not know sighing until you have experienced the masterful, polished, revered Colombian female sign. In this family, sighing deeply, sighing loudly is the biggest, most annoying form of protest because it inevitably begs the question, ¿Qué pasó? Because it comes with the inevitable answer, ay nada. A form of protest that continues questioning itself to eternity for the sole purpose of soaking all the energy in the room until someone breaks down and tells you their secret. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be aware for other videos. Peace out. Bye bye. Get a tropical.